Today, I'm gonna show you how to paint some storm... What's up? Today, I'm going to show you how to paint storm cast. Okay, so apparently we're painting dark angels. This is by far the most requested video I've ever had, painting dark angels. We're going to approach this the same way we did with the ultramarine and the blood angel. We're gonna start by just using the contrast paints, painting as much as we can quickly to a tabletop level. And for those of you who then want to take it to the next level and make this look amazing, we're going to do that using regular Citadel paints. So pick out your brushes and Let's start painting. As always, we start off by priming the miniature black and then spraying it with the Wraithbone White from above. I then jump directly into painting all the red details on the plasma weapons and on the purity seals. For this, I'm using the contrast paint Blood Angels Red. Be careful when applying this so you don't spill any red on the plasma coils. When the red is applied, we're going to the plasma coils and adding some ethermic blue. This paint is kind of thin, so I had to go back twice and apply another layer just to get that effect I wanted. It's then time to jump onto all the metal parts of the miniature. We're basing these in the black Templar contrast paint. We're adding this to the bionic arm, to the rivets between the metal parts and to, to the weapon parts that's gonna have a metallic look. It's time to move on to the armor. And as you might have guessed, the base for the armor is Dark Angels Green. I had a hard time figuring out this paint, because I had to apply it a lot thicker than I did with all the other contrast paints. And the parts where I didn't add enough, it just ended up looking really weird. So take your time to figure out how much you need to add, and be careful so you don't spill anything to the parts that's not gonna be green. The purity seals are a three-way mix of snakebite leather, even and yellow, and lamian medium. And for the icons on the chest and on the shoulder pad, I'm using a three-way mix again. It's skeleton horde, apothecary white, and lamian medium. This mix is a not very strong color, so I had to go back and add another layer on some of the details that I wanted to be a bit darker, like on the inner parts of the wings and in the shades. The belt is painted in Saigor Brown. And, as always, all the leathery parts are painted in snakebite leather. And this skull box on his back, I'm making a gold tone. So, I'm starting off with even then yellow, and then shading it with snakebite leather. And with these simple steps, we already have something that is tabletop ready. But of course, we want to make your miniature look as beautiful as they can. So, we'll take it to the next level. Caliban Green is the regular paint that is closest to Dark Angels Green. So, we'll be using that for the shades if we need to. The first highlight is Warpstone Glow, followed by Moot Green and Skarsnik Green, and we top it off with a white highlight. 
And these highlights will be applied using different techniques. The main and most important thing here is where you place your highlights. And with this I am assuming that this armor is made out of metal. So on all the round parts the brightest point will be the highest point on the armor. And for everything that has a cylindrical shape we will be putting the highlight along the side. So I start off by sketching out the first highlight, the warp stone glow. This paint is incredibly thin, so I had to go back and apply this at least twice on every part where it's supposed to be. So if you have a different brand that has a similar color, I strongly recommend you to use that instead. And a reminder when you sketch these paints out, the most important thing is where you place the highlights and not which color you use. If you're not used to doing non-metallic metal, I can strongly recommend you to go to my Instagram, look at the photo of this mini and just analyze where I place the highlights. When the first layers are done, I'm doing a 50-50 mix of Warpstone Glow and Moot Green and adding this to the center of the first highlight. We then work our way up all the way to the Garsnick Green and pass that to about 50-50 mix between White and Garsnick Green. On some hot spots where you want to put a lot of focus, you can also add a small dot of pure white. But this is only where you want to emphasize and draw a lot of attention. And on the edges of the shoulder pads I want to place the highlight on the bottom corners because that is where most light would be reflecting. When you've done this you can also add an edge highlight along the edge of the edge of the shoulder pad. When adding the final highlights, for me at least, I feel like it's easier to get full control by stippling the last bit. It's time to add the highlights to all the steel and metal parts. The paint we're using here is Demonette Hide. And the same principle applies here. We're just dragging this along all the cylindrical shapes on the side, not on the top, not on the edges. We want it to be shining on the side of the weapon and on the side of the bionic arm and all the other metal parts of course. So the first layer we add is just demonetide out of the pot. I then make smaller and smaller highlights, continually adding a bit more white to all of the highlights. The last line I draw I want to be about 60 to 40 white to purple. And then just add tiny dots of white to give it a bit extra sheen. Be very careful with this placement. I 
I painted the center of the eyes white and then I add Vallejo fluorescent orange. All you need is one layer of this and it will look awesome. Okay, we're almost there. We're just gonna highlight the red parts of the weapons. We're doing that with Wild Rider Red and then the final highlight of Troll Slayer Orange and mixing that with a little bit of white for the final sheen. And once again, look at the placement of the highlights. The sides of the weapon is where I put my focus. So it's some time and a couple of more layers than I thought I would have to do. We have a finished Dark Angel. Once again, these contrast paints are kind of fun to work with, but out of all means I've painted so far with the contrast paints, I think that this green was the hardest to work with because if I didn't put like a super thick layer of the Dark Angel green, it looked really bad. So. I kind of felt like I had to go back, but then if I would have gone back and added another layer of the Dark Angel Green, it would be even more patchy and you would have these weird lines going through it. So this was a tough color to work with. But as with the other minis, like the red, I really enjoy and I really enjoyed painting metal parts because that was super fast and it just looks great. Um, so if you want like a quick non-metallic metal, I think that, that the contrast paints are terrific for that. There are more of these coming up. Before I paint any more Space Marines, I'm going to do a Stormcast video. And there is also a Orc film recorded. This one is without the contrast paints. It will be more about how you can approach painting an Orc face as the pros do it. Using volumes and different types of blending to get it to a super high level. So, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on this side. Leave a comment in the section down below and have a great day. Bye.